uh, listen, and I listened to your talk at TEDx, and it was very impressive, so I wanted to go further. And uh, I mean, you're a pretty uh, well-known name in social media space, and uh, I'd like to ask your opinion, do you think uh, how social media will evolve uh, journalism in the next, maybe? Sure. I think yes. social media is uh, one of the biggest things to affect journalism since the rise of the internet itself. So I consider the rise of mobile mm -hmm. and social to be of equal importance. And what you are seeing is that we are, we are seeing uh, tremendous changes in journalism. Now what social media can do is it can do four things for journalism. It can help you find sources, ideas, mm -hmm. trends, so new things. The second thing it can do is to connect deeper and better with your own audience. Third, it can help bring traffic attention, eyeballs to your work, because after all, eyeballs are the currency of the internet. So attention and traffic to your work. And the fourth, it can build your brand. So I find that most journalists think only about one or two of these things. I'm keen on having journalists think about all four things together. Okay, and uh, uh, what are the, you think, the current trends and then maybe the, what are the future ones? Well, the, the, the main trends are that, uh, that uh, people are using more social media than ever before. Mm -hmm. And more journalism is being created and consumed than ever before on a lot of these new apps, mobile and otherwise, uh, to consume journalism and to produce journalism. So I think that's very exciting. At the same time, there is also a lot of information and information overload. So one of the things we have to think about is how do you direct people to the right things? Because one of the dirty secrets of social media is that almost everyone will miss almost everything you do on social media. Yeah. That means they're going to miss it. So how do you then drive attention to it using social media? That's one of the things you have to think about. And uh, how you drive? Well, you drive, it, uh, you drive it by building uh, your network when you mm -hmm. don't need it so that it's there when you need it. You cannot just come and just expect it to be there for you. You have to build it. I call it almost hand-to-hand -hand combat. You have to build one follower at a time, mm -hmm. your, your followers. And then once they grow and then you build them, then you can uh, send them things. So among the things I tell people, don't just talk about yourself. Only one in every five posts should be about you. The rest should be about interesting and unusual people, places, and things you're looking at. And uh, it should have a, a focused areas? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I believe you should be using it in a strategic manner. So mm -hmm. you should be looking at two or three things that you are focusing on and tweeting about. So for example, you know, there's a very interesting conversation, but I haven't tweeted that I'm hanging out with you and we're we're doing this interview because it doesn't help my audience right away. Once you send me the link to this, then maybe I'll, you know, so you're always yeah, thinking from an audience point mm -hmm. of view, like how will this help somebody? Mm -hmm. But I might say, hey, I met this really interesting journalist from Turkey. If you want to follow her Turkey tweets, please, you know, so that's, you have to think from an audience point of view. Okay. I mean, uh, I listened to your talk in, at TEDx and uh, you gave the, the success in social mm -hmm. media, the keys. Yeah. And that slide was really impressive. Yeah. And, uh, Okay, then what are these keys? And okay. the, is it the same success keys that yours? Yeah, well, I, I think that social media, uh, it's all about thinking like your audience. And so the words that I use are words like helpful, useful. Your content should be helpful, useful, timely, mm -hmm. uh, actionable so that people can take action. It should be, a, uh, should be distinctive. Like why should they listen from you over all these other people? Uh, it can be occasionally entertaining. It can be fun, it can be funny, but you have to have a strategy. That's the main thing. And if you can be all, the, another term I use for success in social media is please be more generous. A lot of people don't think about being generous as part of their job, but I think we should be more generous on social media. Give a lot of credit to other people. Don't just say, look at me, 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 but give credit to other people as well. And uh, uh, from an entrepreneurship perspective, and uh, you already <coughs> teach digital entrepreneurship, Mm -hmm. uh, when you say digital entrepreneurship, is it uh, like including social media? No, oh, absolutely. Uh, one of the things that we see in American uh, digital entre media entrepreneurship, uh, the four areas where there's a lot of interest is local, social, mobile, mm -hmm. and video. So those are the four things that I think there's a lot of interest in. And uh, one of the things I believe is that every startup 
needs a social media strategy, even if they're not a digital company, yeah. even if they're making handbags or they're making apps, they need a social media strategy and they need to think, how can I accelerate the attention to this? Mm -hmm. Social media can amplify the good that you do. If you're good in real life, you can be great on social media. If you're great in real life, you can be unbelievable in social media. But if you are weak, your product is terrible, bad ethics, bad product, bad quality, mm -hmm you'll be terrible in social media. Social media amplifies the good and amplifies the bad. Okay. And uh, which startup companies, maybe in social media or in digital domain that you think they are doing pretty well and you find... Well, I mean, you know, the, the, the obvious ones you all know about, you know, the, all the obvious ones. But like, you know, Instagram was one I could tell you was going to be successful because they did one thing and did it really well and they use social media. Another one I'm using called Tout, T-O-U-T, mm -hmm. which is short video. Um, another one today I talked about uh, um, about uh, SoundCloud is mm -hmm, another yeah. one, mm -hmm. and so these are all apps that do that they're good they're good products mm -hmm. so they can be successful on social in, in, in social media. Pinterest is another one. I mean it's its own network, so it's a little hard. But you have to think about um, you know like one of the things that I I always talk about those flip cameras. Mm -hmm. I don't know if these uh, made it to Europe or to Turkey or the, that parts of Asia, but this was a this was a terrific phone, I mean camera, it's not a phone, sorry, uh, but it's a video camera that did one thing really well. You connected it and you could upload your video instantly and people loved it and I loved it. And the company shut it down, that was stupid, after they paid 500 million dollars for this. And then they shut it, which is kind of stupid. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is you need good products that people love and then other people will use it and promote it for you. People will do the marketing themselves. Mm -hmm. but the, uh, what are the, I mean, for example, when you can actually start the... Uh, this is in New York, so yeah, you yeah. get all the... <laughs> <laughs> New companies in, in social media, but what are the next steps that, that you... So the trends, for, for the trend, yeah. yeah, so the trends I see, first of all, if I was good at predicting, I wouldn't be sitting here. I would be on a beach no, somewhere, no, I'd be very know. rich, so, uh, <laughs> so I'm not good at predicting, but I think definitely geolocation, geolocation. that where people are and what, what, what are they doing, what are their friends doing. How can I connect with existing big networks? Uh, we have seen with Spotify, which is a music mm -hmm. app, within Facebook, like you can do things with inside Facebook. Mm -hmm. You can have, I believe the future of all journalism is digitized, specialized, and socialized. Now that's bad English, but what I mean by that is it's going to be more and more digital, it's going to be more and more specialized, and it's going to be more and more social. So you're mm -hmm. going to have just more social work in a socially um, positive materials in everything we do. So we're going to see that. Okay. And that's going to be important. And uh, all, all, all those new trends, I mean, uh, for startups, I think it's going to open a totally new domain. And, uh, and new doors. I think there's a chance now for people to make a brand. What used to take three, four years, you can make a brand in six to 10, 12 months. Mm -hmm. But it all goes to the core of what is the product you're making. Is it useful? Is it helpful? Is it timely? Is it help? fix mm -hmm. a problem? Does it solve a problem? If it does, you don't have to worry about the money. People will fund it and they'll use it. One of the people I teach with is a guy named Ken Lehrer, L-E-R-E-R, -E -E -R, and he runs Lehrer Ventures. And he was founder of the Huffington Post with Ariana Huffington. Mm -hmm. And somebody said, what is your favorite investment? And he said, groupme.com, which is a group texting yeah. service. And someone said, well, how does it make money? And he said, it make money. We don't worry about making money now. All we care is, does it have a terrific product, a great user base that is so committed that they love your product, and does it work? If that's all true, money will take care of itself. After, between the time he said it and nine months later, Microsoft bought it for yeah. millions of dollars, right? It's so it's a pretty uh, key key yeah. to decision criteria yeah. for entrepreneurs. Yeah. Is is does it work? And is it solve a problem? If it doesn't. It doesn't matter how much pedigree of the or you know creators. It, none of that matters. It's what is the quality of the work. That's mm -hmm. all that matters. Okay.